addressed council committee meeting for monday november the seventh thank you for our guests for being here we appreciate it if we have a request if we can when we make a motion just raise our hands we can make sure that we have proper documentation of who makes the motion i think it'd be helpful for people to um know who makes the motion to online so if you just want to do that for me um all right first we have citizen participation we have none we will go into the public works committee dr shanice chris thank you so much first i'd like to introduce the members of the public works committee council member elisa lane and council member sherry mara um is there a motion to approve the october 10th public works minute minutes motion to approve is there a second second thank you um the public works committee oh i don't know uh Okay, <laughs> so we have the report before us. Are there any Philip Tate? But you're in. Okay, hi. Steven <laughs> Friend, still known for Philip Tate. Okay, Steve, what's your last name again? Friend, it's F R E U N D. Okay, thank friend. you. No thank problem. you so much for being here. Is there anything that you'd like to highlight for council? Um, no, just getting ready for Christmas decorations coming up. Um, and I think that's it. Okay, thank you so much. It'll be nice to see it festive on the street. Um, are there any questions from the committee? I was going to check with Eric. I know we lost a park bench, right, from the car that hit it. Are, is that in place to order it time-wise? We have. We filed for the, um, the individual's insurance where we filed a claim with his insurance company. <clears throat> and once we get word on that claim, I believe they'll notify Amanda. Yep. And so once they notify us... Um, We'll go ahead and buy that replacement. So, have to go through the insurance process. So okay. It'll take just a little bit of time. Are, would we ever consider putting another park bench on Main Street? And I asked that because we were ordering that one that got smashed. Certainly. Um, that area on Main Street, like where the postcard mural is, and there's like a, I want to say almost like a pebble area. Okay. But that's a nice open space. It's right there off the trail. And there's nothing to sit from that park bench. We have one, I think, in front of TR Oriental. But like, you know, when you get ice cream or the icy place right there, you just kind of, there's not, there's not anything there. Certainly. I'd be happy to pull together some costs and um, and maybe we can go ahead and save some money on shipping if, if it's something that we can <laughs> buy them together. Yes. <laughs> we'll, we'll look at those. Um, oh, well, Amanda has the cost right here. They're $2,400, I believe, and that's, not installed okay. um so i'll get with uh steven and philip and find out if there's any in additional installation costs we don't want the benches to right. to grow legs and go away so we try to <laughs> sometimes secure them to a concrete pad yeah that's that's mm -hmm. correct perfect i love that suggestion um any questions or comments from council I have a random, Stephen. I was walking um, over there at the whistle stop, the two trash cans that we have. They are super muddy. I don't know what happened, but you might want to put those on your never-ending to-do list of things to clean up. Yeah, but they had splash all over them. Yeah, there's okay. way more mulch around them, so there's, there's nothing splashing up on it. Okay. Um, but that whole run, they all need to be cleaned. Okay. Um, and then for the Christmas lights, what what – did they go all the way on Main Street, or is it just like bunches? I can't remember what we had last year, but like what it's going to look like. Um, the trees, as far as yeah. the trees go, I yeah. think those are the gazebo. That whole section gets them. And then aren't there some? <coughs> the existing street trees will be. Um, You'll have more than so, just the so ones that are out now. There's like Yeah, the lights okay, in the gotcha. trees. Um, the only additional Christmas lights that we purchased this year were we purchased another um, – extension of the Christmas tree, which will raise the Christmas tree two more feet. So it'll be, um, I think, 18 total feet tall this year. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's a tree that we can add on to yearly. So we were able to buy that um, addition to the tree. But as far as the trees and the lights, it'll be the same amount as last year. Okay. So um, they're not done, I guess is what I'm Yeah, saying. I believe they began installing them. They're probably not 100% installed yet, I would imagine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, Stephen, is it Steve or Stephen? Which one do you go by? I prefer Stephen. Stephen, okay. Well, that's that's what your name is. That's what I want to call you. Um, can you bring me up to date on, on where we stand with our landscaping? Uh, what I'm talking about, the monument signs, I'm talking about the the the, uh, the shrubbery that was pulled up all along Main Street there uh, mid-block uh, from 
the post office down the gazebo and then mid block from uh, the split up there down to um, uh, really. We just had a tree installed, is that? No, I'm talking about the actual shrubbery that was pulled up. And it's bare, you got big bare spots all along down in front of the community tap, down there in front of uh, that whole section where Sushiyama is. Um, thank you, uh, uh, Councilman uh, McCall. Um, I know that Philip has ordered all the replacement shrubs from Sodfathers, who's our normal landscape provider. Um, we're just playing the waiting game at this point in time for them to get out here and install them. So that's something that's definitely uh, in the works, but, you know, unfortunately those haven't been installed yet. But they've been ordered, and they're, you know, going to be installed by the still planting season this, this fall. So we don't have a timeline on that? I don't have a direct timeline, but I'd be happy to get you one. Okay, this, I, I mean, it's your convenience to be fine. And also, <clears throat> another, this, this, is, this is a pet peeve of mine, and, and you know what this is? All the stuff, the, the goodies that we had from City Hall, old City Hall to here, supposedly in this building down here. And what, what, what I'm talking about is we have trophies that we won from, from the Municipal Association that we need to have on display out here. And all I've heard, I've heard for months, and one of them's yours, Greg. One of them is yours, the one you won for the, for the seat, the, the, the car seat thing. And then we, we won one for the park down here, and we won one for the for downtown project. So I just I, I think it just makes it make perfectly good sense for the community and, and the folks that kind of business to be able to see that hey we got our stuff together here. So please look for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll take a look and see. I mean, you know, supposedly somebody's been looking, but we haven't seen them yet. Okay, okay? I'd appreciate that a bunch. Yeah, no right, problem. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, everyone. Is there a motion to adjourn? I'm so moved. Second. Thank you. <laughs> and just if you guys will raise your hand when you make your motions, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, Public Safety Committee, Chair Byers. Thank you, Stephen. Appreciate it. Call to order the Public Safety Committee meeting for November 7th. President are myself, Shanice Chris, Wayne McCall, Brantley Vest, and Grant is on his way. Um, can we have a motion to approve the October 10th minutes? Motion. Thank Second. You. Yeah. Okay. Um, you all have the, we'll start with Greg, sorry. <laughs> well, I'm, ask them to switch up the order in the report, and then we'll have Ben go in the hot seat first. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You all have the fire department report in front of you. Does anyone have questions for Greg about the fire report? Yep. Um, anybody on council have questions for Greg specifically about the fire report? I have a question. Are we still in communication with Furman about possibly having them pay a little more for fire services and stuff? We, we have not um, started that yet. We're still gathering our stuff in. We're waiting for the right opportunity. We initiated um, some contact with their um, the person who was leading their master planning process because they invited us to participate in their master plan. There, um, and so we had initiated with them. We said, "Hey, this master plan will provide a good opportunity for us to get together and discuss, um, you know, service needs as it relates to future growth." And so we have not taken that next step because they have not, uh, I guess, completed. The, the next step of their master plan. They had hired a consultant to come in and prepare that. And so I think once they move forward with that, that will provide us a good opportunity to sit down with them and say, we love the master plan. We love that you're planning for future growth, but we would have some input as it relates to for future service needs as it relates to that growth. And so that would provide us a good opportunity. Has that ever been adjusted, Greg? It's April 18th, 2013. started in the, the quote was signed in, in April so it's the same thing we started in December 12th oh that's before that's the, before that's, that's right that's what threw me off for a second yeah, yeah, exactly uh, you're correct that's when it actually went through council you're correct you're you are correct action. and it has and that's that's been 10 years this coming December and, and, it, and it and it has never been adjusted since all right anything you want to highlight on the report Greg 
Okay, great. anything else you want to tell us about the fire department? We're walking right along, everybody's still there, and nobody's mad and left yet. <laughs> okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> Looks Thank like Carter you. doing a good job. He, he is, he's, he's working hard at it, and he's really getting knocking some stuff out, and I, I'm, uh, I just appreciate y'all allowing us to have that <coughs> position, and it's really paying off. How's the new captain working out? He's doing all right. He's, doing all right. He's, got, he's got a couple of classes he needs to take, but we'll, we'll get there. Okay. Thank you. Anything you want to highlight on the report, Ben? Um, nothing on the report. Um, I would like to, to mention the um, most recent grant that we have an opportunity to accept from the federal government. Um, it's called a COPS grant, Community Oriented Policing Services Grant. Um, that grant would uh, allow us to go ahead and hire another officer and then have a, a full-time community uh, officer that we can assign to work not only downtown but also with homeowners associations um, and uh, events in the city uh, I have a, a plan right now that if if uh, uh, when we hire this person I would have actually one of those community officers per uh, shift or excuse me per patrol group one on Bravo one on Charlie so in other words, seven days a week, I would have an officer here from nine to nine or 10 to 10, depending on um, what events were going on in the city. So we'd have a community officer basically seven days a week. Great. So, so when do you think you'll be able to hire for that position? So we've, we've inter uh, completed interviews and we have a couple individuals in mind now. Um, just wanted to let council know that this year, um, it would be zero cost to the city to hire this person now. The way the grant works is next year there would be some costs the city would have to pay part of the salary. The federal government will decrease what they pay us each year okay. uh, as part of that. Um, so it would be no cost this year, a uh, little bit budgeted next year, and then a little bit after that uh, each year on after till the government quits giving us money for that position. It's guaranteed beyond this year, though, just at a smaller, it just reduces each year? Correct. The okay. amount reduces each year. You don't year have to reapply? Use. No, sir. No, sir. Okay. It's a... It's a a five-year grant okay. and they give us money for three years so. well if my memory serves me correct that's how we got Donnelly to begin with um, he was a um, um, traffic we got a traffic grant yes sir yes sir that was a, a different grant but similar yeah. similar thing yes sir. yes sir so that's where I would like to go with that and just wanted to make sure council understood that, that it, basically I'd be getting a per person early instead of next year. We get them now and it's paid for this year. So I uh, just wanted council to know that. And, and hopefully with that plan, two community officers, 9 a.m. to 9 p.m., be at events and everything. So we'll have somebody there and that would allow the other officers to still focus on the, the traffic and calls. And, and we'd have that, those community officers working closely with uh, business owners and homeowners associations. So. Thank you. Does anyone on the committee have questions about the police report? How's, how's the traffic situation has, has, is downtown? Has the speed trailer, has, has it helped uh, the, the presence, the, the foot traffic presence? I mean, when they, is, is, is that even contributed, do you think, to the, to the traffic situation at all? Or, I mean... Yeah, I think the speed trailer, we, we bounced it around this past month. As you see on the report, we use three different locations every day. The, with the fire department being able to add the solar panel on it, we're, we don't even have to bring it in to charge it now. We can leave it out 24-7 and just move it around. So that, that helped out a lot for minimal cost. The, the, the warnings and tickets that are being issued on Main Street in downtown, we're receiving great feedback from the businesses on Main Street. They love seeing us there. They love seeing us address those issues. So you're still going to have the issues. Uh, for example, Williams Road. I live on Williams Road, as you do also. Absolutely. Um, we don't have that many citations or warnings issued, but when we spent time over there, people are slowing down, and the speed trailer has slowed people down when we're there. Somebody, somebody got they, somebody got a big one yesterday. I mean, I sat out there and looked, and here, here he was. You know, his lights. I mean, and that's what I mean. But you and I, we've had this conversation. Mm -hmm. Is primarily it's our neighbors. Right, and we don't. When they see us, they, they slow down. That's a, a spot where it's hard to sit. When they see us sitting on the side of the road, they're slowing down enough and they're, they're curbing their, 
their um, their speeding to when they see us, and then when we're nowhere around, that's when some <coughs> of it's going on. So um, it's kind of hit or miss over there on, on Williams. But we we spent a lot of time over there. The officers have they're just not getting people that are violating when we're there. So. And I'm sure that's is, that's not an anomaly. There is like two times a day mm -hmm. from 7:30 to 8:30, <coughs> quarter to nine, and then from 3:30 to 4:30, quarter to five. Right, and that's similar to Main Street with it being in the morning for go, people going to yeah. work, and then five to you know four thirty to five thirty or six, and they even come home from. That's work. a that's such a cut through on on our road. Absolutely, you know it's it's a cut through that people use when they come in from the east side, you know, over off of twenty five to get to two seventy six, and instead of having to go through town, they could go down, shoot right across, and you know come right. out. I believe it's really really shown a difference. I believe, I believe there's been a difference. I know that the, the businesses are happy and, and uh, the pedestrians see us out there. Um, so I, I think it is showing a positive impact on, on slowing people down. Oh, I, I can, I can speak, I can, I can speak from, from our, from my, from my, between, between my two red lights from the, from Poinsett and, and, and Main Street split up to Center Street, they're definitely happy. Good. Definitely happy. Very good. It makes a big difference when, when like, and I'm speaking as, as, as one of those persons, one of those business people on Main Street, <clears throat> to see, you know, the guys come up there, you know, when they're walking, you know, to stop in to say, hey, what's going on? And, you know, and they, they see the other guys, and, and now and they're learning, they're learning who we are. Mm -hmm. they're, they're learning, learning our names, and, and you know, and, and the other business people are learning who they are. And, I mean, it's just, it's a win-win. Right, absolutely. It's definitely a win-win, and I'm speaking from just from my block, but <clears throat> it's a good thing, very good thing. I agree. Does anyone on council have questions about the October police report? I was curious: is the speed trailer is that something we're going to be able to keep and do, or do we have it for a certain time frame and then it goes away? No, we we own that trailer, okay. so it's it's ours. It doesn't cost anything. Um, especially with the solar powered panel on it, so it costs nothing to the city, um, and we just we just move it around and we lock it up to where you know, um, run it for a week or two in one spot and move it somewhere else. So if there are any complaints from the from the neighborhoods or, or anybody in the community, we can always move it to where we need to put it. But no cost to the city, and it's ours. I, I do remember. Sorry, Go ahead. Um, there was a home meeting, I think, with the new subdivision, and so the Glenview Park area. <laughs> They said, I think the speed does change between coming around that corner, right. but people don't slow down coming. That, and so those people don't go all the way up to TR High School to cross. They usually go halfway, and they said those cars come around so quickly. So I do remember, I don't know if you put it over there or had problems, but, but they had said there was a problem. Yes, we had it over there <coughs> um, right in front of Tankersley's building there. Um, when we put it there again, we'll put it back further before you get to Glenview Park. We'll set it up there again, and that's a major spot there because you're coming from a 45 into that's a 35 changed, and then yeah. 25. So we'll set it back next time before Glenview Park and see if we can get some people educated there. It and we'll be, also spend some enforcement there, too. It may be a touch sensitive. <laughs> Like, <laughs> I was coming through town 31, and it was red and blue. Mm -hmm. Are you well, taking a personal break? So, so, well, it was a good reminder, but I was like, that's aggressive. I'm so, 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 yeah, if you go, yeah, it'll quit at 30. Oh, okay, so it's five. Yeah. It's, okay, well, that makes sense. Yeah, it's set to where if you're going up to 30, it'll show your speed. The trailer is sensitive or your foot is sensitive? <laughs> well, either way. <laughs> it, when you're when you're six miles or more over, it'll flash red and blue lights. That's what it was. So, I was so, right yeah. on that number. So if you're going say 28 in a 25, <laughs> it, it'll just take your speed or maybe slow down or something. You know, we Why? can we can change those settings too for whatever. No. Fair enough. <laughs> 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 And in, 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 in defense of Brantley, my wife swears that that, that, that it is off, that the speed limit is you not know, correct on you it. You know what I could do? I can actually put it in there to where it says slow down Brantley. If <laughs> <you know. laughs> Let's Some of the new all ones you do can a do test. That. Let's all do a test and see if it's calibrated properly. <laughs> properly? I just want to have fun on Main Street. It like it was saying 31, I think, right? Uh, 
interesting. <laughs> um, Chief, this isn't about the October report, but how are we on our certification for the department process? <clears throat> well, moving slowly right now. Um, you know, Sam passed away that was doing part-time with us, so it's kind of fell back on me and Teresa and uh, the captains, and we are trying to get all the hiring done. So we're kind of slow right now. Um, we still have a, we're a year and a half in, have a year and a half to, to get there. So okay. we've met with uh, someone from uh, South Carolina, uh, uh, I forget, I want to call it Scalia, but someone from the organization that, that helps assist with the um, the accreditation. So we're still working on that. It's kind of slow right now, but we're still working on that. But you got a year and a half to. Got a that. year and a half to, to get to get it there, and and uh, and uh, we'll, we'll get there. Okay. We'll get there. Great. Walmart service calls are down a lot. Yes. Is it's that November. Is that why? <laughs> they will go up next month, <laughs> probably. Why, yeah. <laughs> no, it's it's us working together with Walmart. I really believe working together with them, and and you know <clears> we're. Uh, the judge put some in jail uh, the other week. Um, I guess they were second-time offenders. So um, the judge is sending a message to second-time offenders are going to jail. You're not just going to get community service to pay a fine. So I think the, the overall picture of the, the judicial and us and Walmart work, I think it's working right now. So we'll just keep our fingers crossed. So. Okay, good segue. You have the um, municipal court report in front of you. Does anyone have questions about that? <clears throat> Thank you, Ben. Okay, and does anyone have questions about the building permits report? Anything you want to highlight there, Eric? Um, just that we saw a little uptick as mm -hmm. anticipated in October. Um, um, so uh, that was uh, seeing a little bit more activity on the new construction as well as is that uh, still mostly pine stone? Yep, pine stone. Um, those are uh, beginning to go up. So mm -hmm. that was probably accounted for most of those that we saw, most of the six that we saw this month. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, can we have a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Second. Thank you. All right. We will move into Planning <coughs> and Development Committee. Chair Vest. All right, call to order the Planning and Development Committee. Uh, members present, myself, Brantley Vest, Wayne McCall, Kelly Byers, Dr. Shanice Chris, and Grant Baumgardner. Uh, looking for an approval of the minutes from October. Motion to approve. Second. All right. Mr. Ford. Now, what happened to one of the best stashes in the game? What, what? what happened? For Halloween? <laughs> Where'd it go? Wow. <laughs> yeah, it was time. It was I told time. him he lost right, a bet when right. I came in this morning. Yeah. I was like, what happened? Did my, you lose my, a bet? My oh, you did that today? My Phillies <laughs> lost in the World Series, so I had to shit. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Good deal. Anything you want to highlight on the report? I see there are a couple of new projects um, listed on the report. Anything you just want to highlight for us? Um, yes, yeah, so we do have a subdivision that was uh, referenced earlier, I believe, by Council Member Mara um, mm -hmm. uh, off of uh, North Main Street. Um, that that is that came before y'all for a rezoning uh, to become a, a flexible review district a few months ago. The next step in the process is to become is to go to the Planning Commission for major subdivision requests. Um, so it's the exact same uh, plan that was uh, that was approved by y'all back in I think it was over this in the summer. Um, but this is just the next step in the process, so it's been added. It's been re-added back into the into your uh, into your table there. So that'll be the 4th Street lot subdivision uh, that's referenced. And then also we have a rezoning that will be coming up uh, to y'all next month. Uh, it's a piece of property on Plaza Drive. It's currently a yoga studio. Uh, it's zoned residential, uh, multifamily. It's being split off from a different property, so they're just uh, it would be non-conforming at that point. So this will just bring them into conformance. Since it's a commercial use, they're asking for C2 zoning. So y'all will see that next month. Um, for Where was that, Mike? I'm sorry. That's uh, 3 Plaza Drive. Uh, they'll be requested. It's currently zoned RM. They're going to be requesting C2 okay. to bring them into conformance. Uh, it's currently a yoga studio. Gotcha. That's, that's an odd zoning for that property anyway. It is. It's part of a larger parcel that's residential multifamily that actually uh, uh, it, it stretches all the way out to Tug Mountain Road. Mm. Um, that's all RM in there. So um, I think they, they had some contractual issues they needed to work through. One of those included that's where the zone correction. There, was, there used to be a mobile home park there as well. Yes, sir. Right there where that is. Yes, sir. I actually saw that sign today. 
I was like, where did that come from? What's yep. going on? I just put it out on Friday, so. Well, and I'm wondering, so that, it, it's a gas station beside it, but it's not? Yes, ma'am. It, it's a different property. Okay, so it's not, that's not part of that corner. Correct, okay. correct. It's actually the, the property, there's a creek there, and then just north of the creek, it's that property that stretches all the way west to Tubbs Mountain by Magnolia Cottages in that back, back in that little area. Yeah, so yeah, thank you. So public hearing will be next, uh, I guess it'll be this month uh, at, at November's uh, Planning Commission, November 22nd. That will be the pl public hearing, and then it'll be before you guys for first reading in <coughs> December and then January. Is um, This is outside of what we're talking about here. Just a quick question. Is there um, a property that Zoning Appeals is going to be hearing either this month or next? Yes, they are. Uh, the Board of Zoning Appeals will be hearing their request tomorrow for a special exception. Okay, okay. And that's for which property? Is it? What was the address of that property? Right off of 25. I, I just got an email about it this week. Yeah, I was drawing a blank on the on the exact address. Um, but there, it's Kevin uh, Whitaker? 10 Kirby right. Drive, 10 Kirby Lane, I'm sorry, is the, or Kirby yeah, Road, I yeah, think it is, yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, right at the corner, it's the old Kevin Whitaker yeah, uh, property. Yeah, yeah. Uh, they're looking to do a, um, a self-storage facility there. So it's not an, it's not an it's not a use allowed by right in the C2. It's a use allowed by special exception. So it has to go before the Board of Zoning Appeals for that special exception. Okay. Okay. Thank you. So it literally says a special exception for storage like in our ordinances. Yes, ma'am. So it's very clearly right now. Okay. Yes, ma'am. For mini mini warehouse and self storage. Yes, ma'am. Anyone else on committee have questions regarding the uh, report for October? All right, we'll move on. Anybody on committee? Uh, or I'm sorry, anybody on council have any questions for Mike? Did we nail down vaping? Like, we got that set in stone, right? Yes, ma'am. All right. Just random, making sure that was checked off my... Speaking of vaping, I, I think that we, we are updating the language here of the downtown district. Mike, do you want to uh, give us some information on the, that text amendment? Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So this is uh, before you all, um, or will be for first reading coming up. Um, this is the downtown district. Is what it's, uh, we, we've, I think we've kind of bandied about a few different names for this thing, but essentially it's the downtown overlay district. Um, it, it's a set of regulations laid over top of, of the existing regulations in downtown. And, and Amanda, do you have uh, the, the full packet? You can pull up the map. I just want, want to show you all the map while I'm talking about it. So essentially this was, this was broken down into three separate sub areas. Uh, the downtown sub area, the trail side sub area, and the gateway sub area. And they all are essentially, um, <coughs> Yeah, it would be, it's like page 30 something, should be coming up pretty pretty yeah. soon there. Um, but essentially uh, what it does is there'll be separate regulations, but they all sort of tie into the same theme that we want a downtown, uh, we want a walkable downtown, we want a downtown that's built for people, not for cars. That's the main underlying kind of function of this overlay. So uh, <coughs> breaking it down into the three areas, the downtown sub area is the area you see there in red, and um, I think you all have access to a video to see that. Uh, so the red areas are, are the downtown sub areas. That's sort of the, 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 the downtown commercial feel, the, the, the most walkable, the most commercial feel we'll have. Uh, the green areas are trail side sub area. Essentially, they mimic the same thing what the downtown sub, area do, uh, sub areas do, except they're going to have dual frontages because a lot of those properties are located right on the trail, right on the Swamp Rabbit. So we want to make sure that they access both, both frontages. They're not just accessing the road, but they're also accessing the Swamp Rabbit Trail. Uh, and then the gateway sub area is self-explanatory. Those are sort of the gateway roads into, into downtown. So we want to make sure that people understand that they are entering into a downtown area, uh, for, for lack of a better word. So, um, But basically, like I mentioned, the, whole, the, the, the main idea here is we want to make sure this is something that when people are in downtown travelers rest there, it's a walkable community. It's a community that uh, you, you don't have to worry as much about getting hit like our, like our um, bench just got did uh, by cars. Uh, so new this is all for new development that comes in, so there won't be anything retrofitted to this, uh, or it could be retrofitted if it's redeveloped. But uh, we won't, no requirements for anything that's existing now, but new development that comes in <coughs> will be required to, to, to meet the requirements of this ordinance. 
Uh, but that's the gist of it. I'm happy to obviously talk further about this and answer any questions that you guys may have. Yeah, how do we manage that when we're a year down the road, like as far as going back? I mean, like you, I, I think you mentioned it, grandfathered in a, a bit, like existing businesses. But, you know, at what point when all when we've got new businesses meeting these requirements, would we want to go in and, and have and other businesses? A, yeah. I mean, that's a tough question because, yeah, you're going to have, you, you may have a situation where um, everything around it builds up and right. then you sort of have this thing, this kind of donut hole in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, at this point, I, we're, we're, I would hesitate to, to require folks to, to require folks to retrofit, but that's mm -hmm. something that could be considered as we move through this process. And if we do find we reach a point where it has to be done, maybe that we can reconsider at that point. Yeah. But the way it's written now, that's not. Not I enough. think it's written well, and, and I think that's the right way to do it. I'm just curious, like, as we project out a couple yeah. of years. Yeah, any change in use, obviously, would then kick yeah. in some of those. Right. Yeah. I think it would be safe to say prior council's thoughts on this, because this has been a multiple-year project that's gone through several different phases and, and startups, and, and we're finally bringing it to fruition. Now, Mike, thank you for picking up the ball and, and finishing it. but. I think it'd be safe to say for those of us that have been on council for a while, the whole intent with this was to make sure that we had some control of what was eventually our downtown area is going to develop out. It's going to get bigger. It's going to, there's going to be more things that are happening and we just want to make sure that we're able to help control some of what actually happens there. To kind of, to kind of go along with what you're saying, <coughs> question and, and a comment to go along with that. The question I guess would be to you and Greg, since y'all were the only two besides myself that were around when we actually pulled the trigger on the downtown project. Do y'all remember the reason why we weren't able to take that block from where the point set split to Center Street? Why why could we not narrow that down? Do y'all remember that? We're, like we did like we did back this way? You know, we were able to narrow down from coming in off of 25 up to uh, to North Poinsett. And then DOT would not allow us to narrow from there to Center Street. I think it had more of a reasoning that... Proximity to the light, maybe? Well, and, and that was the downtown area was right there. We didn't feel like the downtown area... No, we, we applied that for that. We did apply for that whole section. Okay, see, I don't remember that. It was denied. It was denied. That, that part of it was denied. <laughs> And I was just curious if either one of you guys remember why. Was the high school there? Yeah, that that whole area, the whole area from coming off of 25 to Center Street was in our original proposition. Okay, and it was denied. What would you know why that would be, Mike? I don't offhand. I can do some but, research. But I, I mean, if I mean, I know money's already been allocated for other places, but. If that might be something that we might want to look at about bringing that in, that part of that streetscape in, in line with the rest, you know, what we already have. Does that, that make sense to you? You understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Is that included in this? No, no. no. Well, I mean, it looks like it is. Okay. To, to right. me, it looks like it is. Okay. But that, that area was originally, it was originally requested, it was requested to be in line, right in line with, with from, from back here, or where am I, from right out here, right out here all the way to Center Street. But they denied us from Poinsett, from Poinsett. I think there was something about the way it would interchange back into <coughs> on the other side of Center Street that would have to have a fallout type. Yeah, oh, I got you. So we're, would have to take yeah. it further than Center Street to be able to bring them all back into a uniform right. traffic flow. But, but I, I'm, I'm guessing... From, from See, I, I don't remember. That's been so long ago because we started that project in 2006 was when we started that. And so, you know, that's been, what, 16 years? Long ago. I said, well, yeah, and, and so I don't remember that, but I do remember the original proposition was for it to be two lanes, just like all this is out here, all the way up to that. It was originally... We, it's like it used to be. Yeah, exactly like it used to be. Yeah, exactly like it used to be. And so I, I would just was curious as to if, if you guys remember why and, and, you know, if that would be a possibility for us to revisit that in the future to, to you know, make it, uh, you know, like the rest of Main Street. I mean, if that's the idea. So but I, I don't remember why that would, why that happened. 
I'd like to know. We'd be happy to get with the DOT and revisit that and take a look and see what their thoughts are. A lot of things have changed since then, so yeah. I'd be interested to get the DOT's thoughts on that and see if they'd be um, entertained, um, you know, further. I, mean, I think it would look, it would look much better and it would be, you know, <laughs> be more conducive to doing business up that way. All right, anybody on council have questions for Mike regarding the uh, downtown overlay text amendment? <coughs> Excuse me. I think you did a really good job. It's yeah, it looks great. Yeah, I, so agree. I was going to ask, uh, on the parking requirements, are, are those improving <coughs> from what we did have, or are they just clarified what we already have? Uh, so they do a little bit of both. Uh, okay. They do clarify what we already have, but they, they require additional landscaping, certain landscaping requirements, um, and certain uh, where they're going to be located. So uh, the requirement moving forward, if you're building a new building in downtown, is the parking, parking would have to go in the rear or the side of the building, away from, away from the street. Whereas now, in some cases, they're up front, <coughs> some are in the back. This makes it a much more uniform and keeps that parking, keeps <coughs> the buildings up forward and the parking in the back sort of hidden a little bit and it does it does will it will improve parking in that respect but the parking we have now it is what it is pretty much yeah we you know we we understand the downtown has has some difficulties with parking already so we're, we this this was written with that and with those constraints in mind so I was hoping yeah Mike does this I'm assuming this caps us at two stories so we won't have a three-story within this space. Is that uh, correct? Thirty. I think thirty-five feet would be the the height limit. The whatever the current limit is for the C two. So it wouldn't be able to go above that. Is that three stories? Uh, it, it, we don't. Or is we it like two and a half or something? By feet, uh, the, the the height of the building. So I think it's either thirty-five or forty feet. I don't remember. How about this? Do we have a thirty-five foot building in Travers Rest? <laughs> The tallest building we looked at was, I mean, you're looking at the Bank of Travelers Rest, um, the Hampton Inn, and the Best Western. Yep. Uh, those would be the three tallest buildings. Yep. So yeah, I wouldn't consider kind of those for, like, Main Street, though. I, I think what oh, I yeah, would on Main back, Street, yeah. So yeah, on Main Street, probably the old Gibson cap, House yeah. probably is probably looking at probably the tallest one, but, you know, it's setting back off the road a little bit. And I would say the second tallest one would probably be the Tandem and the... Um, the old white mortuary building. I was just wondering, does this solve our problem of somebody coming in wanting to put a three-story on Main Street? I, I can answer that, actually. Right. So, yeah, we do have maximum height. I, I apologize. I, I okay. threw a blank there. We do. It's two and a half stories. Um, so okay. Um, no, nothing, at no case, taller than two and a half stories. Okay. That's helpful, because I think that was part of our training is not to have a building bigger than what already existed, changing the landscape. Correct. Okay. I believe that does include terraces and mills on right? That would be the, uh, yeah, the total height, it would exclude like chimneys, oh. elevator shafts. Yeah. Because so that comes back from the outside. Okay. Fire, fire That's right. What is that, Greg? Like just a, like a peak or something? No, it's the, it's the very top edge. So we can get, like if they build a, a facade wall mm -hmm. just to the vent, that has to be counted in that same height. Okay. So okay. we still have to be able to get that. Got it, got it. Okay, great. Thank you. Anything else? Motion to send on. Got a motion. All right. Grant, who's the second? Right here. Second. Okay. Go on. There we go. All right. If nothing else, we'll look for a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. All right, Ways and Means Committee, Chair Bumgarner. All right, I call the Ways and Means Committee order. Rick Floyd, Brantley Vest, Shanice Chris, Kelly Byers, and myself are all present. I would entertain a motion to entertain the uh, minutes from the October 10th meeting. Motion to approve. Second. All right, and those are basically as an overview, just uh, over our <coughs> Trailblazer Park playground and reallocation of the budget monies for that park. That's what that was all about. Uh, approval on that, everybody okay with that? There we are, that goes through. Um, at this point, we do not have a financial report at this time. I know that our accountants are working on that. So I expect a full report at our regular meeting next week. Anybody else on committee or off committee have anything? 
Right. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? Motion, motion. to adjourn. Second. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Old business. We have none. New business. We have none. Miscellaneous matters. Eric, do you have anything? I uh, just wanted to remind um, council that we have some openings coming up on our boards and commissions. I believe that Amanda sent out an email to everyone. So if you have any neighbors, friends, or anybody that may be interested serving on a board or a commission, uh, we would love to have some applications so we could present them to council in December. Amanda, would um, you or Beth maybe send us if we had any new applicants? I know Beth did like a little outreach. I'm not sure if we had anybody that filled out an application, but if you did, maybe you just send it to us. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if you're prepared to talk about recycling, Eric, but what are you kind of thinking? So it's going away. So are you um, kind of exploring options for us? Or what I think we should explore like? options. I do. Okay. Um, I think that, um, you know, for us, it's not. Um, cost prohibitive because we're so small. Um, some larger cities, you know, it may not make sense for a larger district or a larger city in some <coughs> situations because the cost is, um, you know, it's not coming down. Um, as far as our total, uh, you know, we're kind of locked in with what uh, Greater Greenville <coughs> Sanitation District decides as a district, but they have uh, guaranteed that they'll fulfill the rest of this year uh, and continue to provide the service through the end of uh, through June 30th, 2023. After that point in time, if we stay with Greater Greenville, uh, we would not have a curbside recycling uh, program anymore. Uh, however, I do think it would be wise for us to put it out and see um, if there'd be some other providers interested in providing the service uh, that could deliver. Um, all the services that we're accustomed to getting in the city and see what those costs would be. And our costs will not be reduced as a correlation for them pulling out trucks and not. Oh yeah, we service. would have to get back and amend. If we stay with Greater Greenville, we would have to amend our agreement with them and, and reduce that uh, out of the agreement. That's the understanding that we would go back to the table on the oh, contract. Yes. Oh, definitely. Okay. Yes, because currently we're paying for that service. So yeah. if and that, they're just getting out of that. It's just not profitable for them at this point. Um, their recycling rate district wide is probably a little less than our recycling rate inside the city. So they're district wide. And then the cost um, on recycling, the, the folks that collect and I guess process the recycling, you know, they're charging more and more to do that to where it's just becoming, um, I guess, cost prohibitive. They feel district wide to their customers. Um, like I, I said, every. Becoming the norm. Yeah, every community is different, yeah. and every community places a certain value on it. Uh, <coughs> but, you know, Greater Greenville's district is, is a very large area, and they have a lot of customers in different parts of the county. Um, so I think what they're seeing is that they just can't justify passing these higher costs on to their customers. And so they're looking at just discontinuing the service um, altogether. And like I said, um, he's going to be flexible with us because we're in an agreement. Uh, and so they're going to continue with the city a little longer than what they're going to do for the rest of their district just to get us through the end of this budgeted year. And then at that point in time, you know, we'll need to make a decision. So in the coming months, you know, we'll probably put out an RFP, um, see what um, other providers can provide the services for all the services and just bring them back to the committee and, and go over those results. That proposal, does that include uh, like um, yard waste material as well? It would include er every service that we're currently getting, yes. So it would be. No, I mean the, to the, the removal part, the recycling part. If we, if we don't have recycling anymore. Then oh, I'm sorry. I misunderstood your question. Yes, so that will be the only, the recycling would be the only service that they are discontinuing. They would continue, if we stay with Greater Greenville, they would continue to provide uh, green waste and, and, and uh, limbs and brush and debris, uh, some bulk waste items. They would provide that service still, and then they would provide trash pickup. Um, the only service that they would discontinue would be the, the curbside recycling. <coughs> So they're, they, it would be safe to say they're expecting us to renegotiate with them. Yeah, and there's some other solutions that we could look at. Um, I know it's not as convenient, and um, but you know we could try to negotiate uh, them establishing a uh, a more convenient drop-off uh, center uh, here if we wanted to go in that direction, and they would. Uh, I think just in preliminary conversations with them, they'd be amenable to establishing 
uh, maybe a more like a convenience center for drop off that they would serve. Currently, we have some of those in the city that are run by the county, um, but Greater Greenville Sanitation doesn't uh, operate one of those in the city. So, you know, that could be an alternative solution as well as to say, all right, you know, you guys could establish one or two convenience centers. Um, it's not the same, obviously, as, as curbside recycling, and it's a step backwards uh, from what we're used to or what some of our residents are accustomed to. Uh, but again, I think that um, we'll just put it out there and see, uh, you know, what companies are available and what companies can provide it at what cost. We're going to explore several options is what it's We're going to explore. Like. Yeah, we're going to explore And we've got time options. to do that, so we're not. Oh, yeah, we got plenty of time. Um, and so they're, they're going to work with us, but we do need to, um, you know, just we'll stay in contact with them, let them know which way we're going. Um, and I told, I told them that we would probably seek options and just kind of see what options are out there for us. It is unfortunate. I see a lot of blue cans out by oh. the road. I feel like we're, our adoption rate's pretty good. Yeah, um, we're doing about six tons. I want to say six tons per every, um, six tons a week, hmm. I want to say. It's pretty good, yeah. Well, I mean, what percentage? Do you know what percentage? I can pull all those numbers together. Yeah, I don't have them in front of me tonight, but, um, you know, we can come back to the Public Works Committee and do a quick presentation on kind of our recycling rates, you know, how many total customers, how many new customers that we've added since we've done the roll cart service and some yeah. of those critical numbers. And um, I'd say you'd probably cut it by, if you had to, if people had to go into a, I probably wouldn't know, like, honestly. Wouldn't do it anyway. Like, I, I feel like that's probably the majority of people. And I think it would be good to hear those figures when you've got some options for us to look at and look mm -hmm. at everything as a full package together to see yeah. where we've come from, where we are, and what our options are. So, thank be you. Be happy to do that. Yep. Great. Thank you. All right. Anybody have anything for the good council? <coughs> I'd like to say thank you to Public Works, or, or Police Department, I'm sorry, uh, for the Halloween there were a lot of police, probably three or four in our neighborhood at different times. We had almost 600 trick-or-treaters at our house. That's crazy. It was amazing <laughs> how many were up there in the streets being blocked, but thank you guys for being out there. It really helped, and with a lot of compliments on it, too. And Main Street, that was a big yeah. undertaking. Motion to adjourn. Second. <coughs> All, right. All in favor? Raise your hand. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Thanks for coming.